Welcome back to The Other Bourbon. It's the Evan Williams season finale tonight and an epic episode called for an epic introduction. So if this is your first time tuning in, my name is Jerry Schmidt and here at The Other Bourbon, we review all the available and affordable bourbon you've been passing by. Each season is its own brand. At the end of each season, we'll do a final ranking of all the bottles within that brand, giving you the ultimate buyer's guide the next time you're out shopping. And this season was all Evan Williams. We started with the Black Label, your classic high volume entry bottle. Then into Bottle and Bond, the dark horse in the bourbon community. Third came Single Barrel, the most expensive bottle in the available Evan Williams lineup. And finally, 1783 Small Batch, which we haven't scored or ranked yet since we wanted to keep everyone in suspense. And suspense it has been, which is why it's taken so long to release this episode. I've actually recorded this episode twice and just wasn't feeling it. I recorded it twice because the results just wasn't what I was expecting and I just couldn't get my head wrapped around it. Mystery Taster, me, my wife, were all thrown off and I think I know why. So take a look at the Bottle and Bond bottle. There's only an ounce or two left. So unlike wine, after a bourbon is open it doesn't need to be drank quickly. And because the oxygen gets into the bottle, the bourbon will begin to change you'll hear people call it opening up. The further down the bottle goes, the more it opens up. On the opposite end, you have what's called the neck pour. This is the very first pour out of the bottle, obviously called the neck pour because the bottle is usually filled all the way to the neck. So what does this have to do with the final episode? Well, when I did my first blind rankings, most of these were full bottles, and I thought I had my ranking locked. I'd even repeated with more blind rankings just to make sure. But then we came to the group ranking night, and I thought I was going to confirm my rankings to the group just to prove how amazing I was. We did the blind tasting, took breaks, and drank tons of water. We ranked our glasses in order and began to reveal what was in each glass. But before we get to the final rank, let's talk about what I had originally scored and ranked these bottles. At the bottom, Black Label. Probably no surprise. Remember, I scored this a 3, and I stand by that. But against the pack, it just doesn't hold up. And it's not meant to. It's the most affordable of all four. And who knows, maybe it'll hold up against future rankings. In third place, believe it or not, the Single Barrel. If you go back and watch episode 3, you'll see why I wasn't the biggest fan. A solid 3, no doubt and plenty of reasons to add it to your collection, but plenty of reasons not to as well. Which brings us back to my original rank for first and second place, and I have to emphasize, I did this blind several times and I had the same outcome each time. And in those rankings, my darling, the Bottled and Bond, fell short to the surprising performance of the 1783 small batch. So what does that mean? Well, I mean, it almost forces me to score it a 4, since that's what I scored Bottle and Bond, and this beat that, right? Not so fast. When it came to the final ranking, man, did we get a very different outcome. And now it's time. Time to reveal the other bourbon's official ranking for the affordable and available Evan Williams lineup. Fourth place, and still no surprise, is the Black Label. It is what it is. In third place... Well, this is where it gets interesting already. My third place ranking is already having a major shift, dropping all the way from my original first place, the 1783 small batch. I couldn't believe it, and we'll get into why I think that happened in a minute. But now it's time to declare a winner. Only the bottle and bond and single barrel remain. Who will take it all? Hanging on to its original second place ranking, the bottle that's near and dear to my heart, Evan Williams Bottle and Bond. Which means Evan Williams Single Barrel has taken the title as the premier affordable and available Evan Williams bottle for season one of The Other Bourbon. And there you go. I mean, I gotta go with the outcome, right? 
Single Barrel stuck in there, trained day and night, took the hard feedback, and climbed all the way from the three seed to prove itself the undisputed champ. So what does that mean for scores? Well, if Bottle and Bond got a four, shouldn't Single Barrel at least get that? Not necessarily. I mean, to me, if the flavor is drifting that much, that makes it unpredictable. And I'd rather give it a score that underpromises and overdelivers. Single Barrel stays a three. And since 1783 Small Bash didn't get a score last time, but had the same flavor drifting as Single Barrel, it only makes sense to follow the same logic and do the underpromise and overdeliver and score it a three. But seriously, how did this happen? Well, I guess we'd have to circle back to earlier in the episode where I talked about opening up in neck pores. Did the single barrel open up in such a dramatic fashion that it suddenly trounced its opponents? It would appear so, but the only true way to know is to grab your wallet, head to your local store, look at those bottom and second shelves, and pick yourself up a bottle of Oh, and just in case you thought I forgot, the 12 year beat them all. By a long shot. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, and comment. Keep an eye out for special episodes, and we'll see you in season two. Thank you.